Now, knife people are a finicky, sensitive bunch. You post a knife you sold 10 other knives to buy, and a buck fan will get on his keyboard and tell you, that looks like a gas station knife. As he fondles the 110, the soft glow of his 19-inch Trinitron tube monitor illuminates his mustache and brimmed hat. He's 35, but an old soul. And also, it's important to remember, the things you like, people will go out of their way to share. They don't like it. You think bushcraft is a useful skill? Well, some mediocre-looking YouTuber will come along and make a mockery of the ancient arch your grandfather used to house his two kids in suburban Minneapolis. Or, I post a video about traditional knives I like, and suddenly traditional knives, the least popular and cool knives in the feeds and in the videos, are for the easily influenced and influencers. You know who you are. The sheep, the rubes. It's the unpopular type of popular. Get it? And don't look now, but your favorite knife brand is suing everybody, and you're gonna need to post a video about it right now, which will follow up your previous upload as to why you, a dirty liar, like soft heat treats and are covering for the knife companies. But one thing we can all agree on is knife fidgetability and how it should be very important as a feature. The most useful of all knife functions, the thing the entire knife community can get behind. What inspired this, you might ask? Well, mad knife scientist Brian from Winter Blade Co. asked me if I wanted to check out his new factor that is moving out of the prototype phase and into the production phase with a release at the end of May. And I said, absolutely. And now we have this video. So what are the best fidget knives? We're gonna make this video a little broader in topic. We're gonna to start with the factor and we're gonna move on to my enduring favorites, where by the end, you'll make sure you ask, well, why didn't you include this knife? Any decent knife reviewer would have included this knife. It's an important knife, you miserable piece of shit. And following this train of thought, at this point, I hope people who watch reviews understand reviews by their nature aren't objective. That's not how opinions work. A review is an opinion. A reviewer will not review everything or most things that you like, and they are a filter, and hopefully you watch them for other reasons. Like, for example, how handsome they are. Now, these knives are knives I've reviewed and handled and nothing more. Yeah, okay, once I held the Protec Malibu, I don't have a video on that because I don't have one, and uh, it was great, and the Civivi button lock, those are those are pretty dope, so uh, let's get those out of the way and move on. First, the new kid on the block, the Factor. However, if the new kid on the block plays with the knife in his front yard, please avoid. Now, the Factor is notable for a few things. It's thin adjacent, slicey blade, and it's insane locking mechanism. As a benchmark, a good fidget knife has different ways to deploy, but is also an excellent everyday carry knife, and this has those things. So let's stare at some numbers here. It's okay, it's not that thin of a spine, I know. Many of these other knives seen later in the video, I have full reviews on, so go to those videos, which I'm gonna try to link at the end, you know, the four videos that link at the end, and then I'm gonna put some links in the description so you can find them. Now the factor here is made by Best Tech, and I honestly have no idea how much these are gonna retail for. Okay, okay, you know what, I so I, I went back and I looked it up right after I wrote that, and it's 375 bucks. Now, price is arbitrary to me at this point. It may not be to you. I have deadlocks, and I'm rich, and I'm famous beyond belief. So it's whatever you're willing to pay to get those things you desire in a knife. If you think a knife is stupid and overpriced, well, you know, that's fine. Some people have a different opinion on it, I, I guess. Now, I don't know if this knife has patents yet. I would assume it would, since there's so many things about this knife you don't see in other knives. Up front, you have... The M390s and a worn foot or sheep's cliff blade. Uh, okay, you know what? This part is actually found in other knives. But here, there's a vent that allows for all different finger placements on different sized hands, which is a working theory as I only have one size of hands, so I can't be entirely sure. It is very sharp, but I do get nowadays you need to be TRM or tactical turns or uh, tactile turn or tactile knife company or whoever with your slice and porn knives to curry the favor of an influencer. The handle is not massive here, but comfortable and fits my four fingers in a grip without being overcrowded. It's neutral, the grip area, and it's half carbon fiber and half titanium. You know, remember like my old Chris Reeve, uh, Sabenza 21 that I sold? And it's lightweight-ish. Some guy on the slip joint video implied that I don't get in depth into ergos, and I'm not sure what that really means. Does it need to be a five minute section where I repeat myself and touch every corner, every surface, and give opinions on those areas? I mean, when you squeeze a knife tight, there is a dip here in the handle, and if you make feather sticks for hours with your hard snapping $300 magnet knife, well, that might be an issue for some. And as you know, feather sticks are the new building a log cabin by hand. Is your knife in use during a typical day for hours at a time? Might I suggest a fixed blade? 
and not a magnet knife. But it would really depend on the hand, right? And I think this knife is one where you use it for a few seconds, maybe a few minutes throughout the day, put it back in the pocket, and it's fine for that. And nothing about this knife bothered me while using it for pocket knife things. The handle is comfortable, edges are chamfered, tumbled. Now the blade here isn't massive, it's tall, so it's slicier than the stock would seemingly indicate. But we're here for the lock. This is quite a unique knife, and this is centered around its M-lock, or magnet lock and detent system. Now the thing that looks like an access lock here is actually a magnet and there's even more magnets in the rear of the handle that keep the blade centered and held into place as well. You can read about this on their website link below, the types of magnets, and uh, but here's how it works in practice. You flip it out like you would any knife with its deployment port, its gap, its hole, its whatever. Flick and then pull the lock back and you flick it closed. It's not as hard a flick as it looks here, it's actually a nice flick because the magnets releases and it, it sucks it back in. And you hear the clink of the deployment, which has a high frequency ring to it. And while I'm not normally impressed by non-flatulent sounds, I've not encountered another knife quite as satisfying with a... It sounds like a something everybody here will be familiar with, a spent magazine in a video game. Anyway, there's a flip lever. A nice solid press manually deploys the blade. I prefer the finger deployment, but smaller hands might like the flip lever better, which looks to be made from G10. Now the flip lever only pushes the blade out when closed. It's not part of the lock, so if you squeeze it while open, it will not affect blade locking. It's not going to close a knife on you. The unique looks of the factor have grown on me since the early prototype phase on his Instagram feed. Brian like posts everything. He posts some cool out the fronts. He posts other styles of knives. He's like a he makes interesting things. It's, it's fun to look at his feed. Now at this one you get fun materials and different colored accents. There's like a little drop down menu, and I believe these open for purchase on May 31st. And I think there's like a pre order after that if that initial run sells out, which probably will. But you know it's it's customizable for the colors. I got the green here. The blade is a touch small for the big blade bros, but it would lend itself to a slightly larger XL version in the future. I, that's, I don't like giving suggestions. That's a terrible... Sorry, Brian. The titanium mill pocket clip is swappable to either side in a tip-up configuration only. And I would tentatively like to rank this in the top three of fidgeters, but we'll see. Uh, here are a few familiar knives so you can determine the size, because sometimes the numbers don't make a lot of sense until you see it next to other things. And, you know, everybody's hands are different size, so... That's why you have some knife comparisons, because you may have one of these. I'm really trying to make this shorter than the Swayback video. Now let's start with some relative unknowns. I mean, some of you might know them because my viewers ain't chumps, but uh, start with the easiest to flip front flipper. Now even if there were such a person, I'm not what you'd call a front flipper enthusiast. I've reviewed the Hunter from HEA Designs, the Real Steel Metamorph, Sharpa Design Tempest, and the Mini Tempest. It's a wonderful story. And those were all okay. This is the Makarta handled variant of the Arcona Nettle. I hope I said that right. With K110 steel, which is another way to say the D2 steel. D2 is of course a stainless steel that tends to stain a bit easier than some stainless steels and is in approximately 75% of knives. Notepad keeps correcting Arcona to Akron, which... Every knife from the Akron Knife Company comes with a can of Skyline Chili. Is there an Ohio accent? I don't think there's an Ohio accent. This is a Missouri accent. Now this one is drop shut with the wrist twist and you can flick your pointer finger fairly easily or your thumb. It's easy to catch and deploy even though it might be a little scandalous at a single row of bearings. But boy is it smooth and it proves if it's done right you don't need the three rows of balls. Now the jimping on top of the flipper is a little grating for long term fidgeting unless of course you built up fidgeting calluses in that area, you know. Modern Knife Bro probably has. And for a while, Knife Nuts had an M390 and a carbon fiber variant that pre-orders are closed on. But, uh, you know, there was also AliExpress. Some of these were available here. But it's unclear if they are available anymore. Can you get this knife anywhere? I'm not sure. So I hope everyone who wanted one got one. Maybe perhaps send Ivan B, the designer, a direct message on Instagram. How about that? His feed is linked below so you can do that. Now the standard knife was about 100 bucks and the high end was like 200 bucks. Both excellent deals on this unique, fun to fidget with and useful knife. The pocket clip is swappable to right or left, tip up, carry only. Levin sent me this knife and he also sent me the next one too. He's part of the problem, guys. Now the Russian knife brand, which might be a, uh, a little hard to get right now, is the Reptilian Finca. He sent me this, uh, I believe it was last year. The Finca is a beast and the best knife brand analogy I can think of is Cold Steel. Yeah, Cold Steel. 
They sold it and now all the knives you wish they'd bring back they haven't and the secondary prices are through the roof. But whose fault is that? You didn't buy one when you could, did you? Now before the sale to, uh, I don't know, GSM, GOV, I remember prices being very reasonable on the secondary. Were they used in crimes? I don't know. But the Finca here is massive, stout, and utilizes a new to me mechanism called a scale lock. So new to me that I had to DM knife tech support video to Levin because uh, I couldn't close it. Ah, uh, the TV has static on it. I hit a button and it's it's just uh, it's just snow now. Uh, okay, okay, did you hit the input button? Uh, there isn't one here that says input. But the Finca scene here uses a scale lock. Who knew? And is it even called a scale lock? I don't know, probably. Slide and pop. Slide and pop. You can do it all day, provided it's a work from home situation and the house is always empty, which could be the case. Now when you lift again to release it, it sucks the blade back in. It's fun, it's unique, and if you dig around a bit on the web, you can find it for under 100 bucks in some other colors than sleep-inducing black G10. Now if the Fink is a cold steel in spirit, how about a real cold steel because I didn't have Demco money. Of course now you need Demco money to afford cold steels, that's just how it is. Remember you can only blame yourself dude, because Lynn and the meat boots tried their best for years. Now you're looking here at the AD15 with the scorpion lock based on the out of production Demco mid-tech and custom AD15. I have a full video on this compared to the, the mid-tech, like most of the knives seen in this video uh, other than the prior three. However, if you don't celebrate the entire catalog, you might not know the Makarta scales on the 8015 here were a special run by Instagram or Slashy Tones. He's also a person too, but he has an Instagram page and it's linked below. But I think those are all gone. I think he had some carbon fibers left for a while. Now this one isn't as fun as the others in that satisfying click clack click clack with a little effort. But it's probably my most used cold steel. There's a learning curve to the lock and you might avoid fidgeting with it as absent-mindedly as you would the others since the tips of your fingers here are now in play. But I don't value my safety a whole lot and uh, don't fingertips grow back anyway. Guess it depends on how far down the finger, right? But I'd also like to point out, because I know somebody else will, the AD20 and the 20.5 with the shark lock are probably more classically fidgetable though. I never got around to buying the full-size AD20 because I didn't have the Demco money. But it's cool knife even if the lock jimping is a little tough on tender fingers. You know, sometimes like I see a knife and I really want it and someone loans it to me and I review it and I'm like, I, I'm going to buy that. But then trying to find like the 400 bucks for a production knife, it's a little hard sometimes. I move on to other things. Okay, let's go to the most heartbreaking of the bunch. The Precious or the Sharp by Design Void XL. Now it's heartbreaking because you'll see why in a minute. Of course, maybe it's hilarious to you. Got to account for the hate views, but it is an interaction, they tell me. You know, good for the channel when somebody leaves a mean, nasty comment. Now, the Void XL is a custom knife, and I don't think there's another one in quite this shade of purple. The Void XL cost me about $1,100 at the time of purchase, and it was made as a one-off. This one has a nice, do we call them vents? You can flick those with uh, whatever finger you desire, but the middle finger for me works best for my size hands. Now the flipper ain't bad either. It's a, it is a flipper, but you can also vent deploy it. So there's two different ways to deploy it, or you can hold and pull. Part of the niceness of this one is it's subtle candied texture. It's not harsh. It's like fun to kind of just like run your fingernail over. Lots of fun for the knife fondlers in the crowd. And the best part of doing these videos is the chance to drop it. I have not done that with this Shit. until now. And I was always afraid of it, right? right on the fucking bricks, just right below the camera. Dinged up the edge on the front. Could have been worse, I guess. It didn't really mess up the uh, the titanium handle with the little tiny texture, the little fine texture. And the moral of the story here is don't do fidget videos with your customs. It's a miracle it hadn't happened to a Hawk yet, even though a Hawk is like a small high-end production. However, finding a drop cloth to lay down would have added seconds to my prep time, so I didn't do it. I just like to tell, I just want everybody to know influencer life is hard. You're looking through the camera viewfinder instead of at your hand, preoccupied with your culture wars. You could be demonetized at any time, you know, you got your rant to go on. Anyway, I can't dwell on it, you know, I can't think about it anymore. So let's, we're going to just move on and uh, I'll just have to sharpen it. The honorable mention here, though, is a full-size Tempest Custom. Just a drop shut, kind of heavy with the front flipper, but I missed that one. I really liked it. It was a loner, and I was afraid I was going to drop that one because front flippers aren't as easy to flip. And I did put down a drop cloth when I am handling other people's knives. I said I'm fine. I said I'm fine. Okay, we're going to move on. Okay, let's do one 
that's outside of the box. Maybe it'll tweak a few people out. It's kind of the side, the bonus there. It's for those interactions below. Now, a good slip joint like the 85 Crown Lifter here can be fun in its own way. <laughs> yeah, that's right, a slip joint. Come at me, all right? Now, some knife bros don't understand slip joints can be fidgetable too. And if they express that opinion below your video, you're like, wow, I can't, you can't fidget with them. And then you come back at them with a, oh, actually, you can fidget with them. Well, you'd be infringing on their right to an unsolicited, unopposed opinion below a social media post, which is in the Constitution or, you know, Bill of Rights or whatever, right? You can totally look it up. Slip joint guys like myself do like to fidget with the crisp back spring, you know, while eating their shepherd's pie. I, I assume they're pumping a fist at the cable news or shaking at it. Pumping, shaking, I don't know. I don't watch cable news. Now, I tend to like something with a half stop because it's like that extra little stop on the way, and it's more predictable to close one-handed. The hard pop of the bottle opener and blade are about perfect on this 85 pattern from Great Eastern Cutlery. You can't buy at a reasonable price anymore. And I think those two have the most perfect sound of all of my Great Eastern Cutleries. One of my top three from this brand. I don't like red-handled knives much, but I do like this one, even if most of the beer I drink is in a can nowadays. All right, so this next one I had to go back and add. I shot the video for it, but then when I wrote the script afterwards, I totally forgot. But it's not my fault, though, because it's a SOG. Now, I know there's such thing as soaking, something you'll never unremember after you look it up. But is there sogging? If not, someone needs to go at it right now. The SOG, Terminus XR. A company whose whole design philosophy up until recently has been, yeah, but you need to be able to use it with gloves. This thing has an access style lock. I mean, it's not an access lock because that would be uh, a trademark or intellectual copyright or some shit. But it does have several fun ways to deploy using its locking mechanism. I, I really did forget what they call the lock here, and I'm sure as shit not looking it up. Now, as you know, tactical companies like SOG love their toughest shit operator jimping. You need to be able to use it with gloves! And that's the one drawback to this one. You can pop and click, pop and click, but it hurts a little when you fidget. You don't really need jimp in here because it kind of gives you the fidget owies and there are ways to do flippers and stuff without the jimping. But it pops hard and you can flip it and you can flick it. At one time I was going to review uh, their Pentagon out the front and a few others and they were going to send me a whole bunch of stuff. But they got bought out by GSM, the same company that bought out Cold Steel. And then it was radio silence in the DMs. Now hopefully their old social media guy is alive and well somewhere flourishing. Do like new companies when they take over, do they just like kill everybody there? I don't know how it works. But if suddenly you start to see lots of SOGs on the channel again, you know that GSM bought me too, because I sure as shit ain't buying any. So please send help. Okay, getting close to the end here, folks. Maybe I have a terrible memory, but when I pulled out the Caribbean and the Paramilitary 2, I expected them to be fluid and drop shut. And to be fair, I do use them and put them away uncleaned. You know, I bring the Caribbean to the beach and I haven't lubed it in a while, so that's probably to be expected. Those, I feel like the phosphor bronze need a nice polish. They need to be used often, otherwise they build up a little bit of, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm making shit up at this point. And I think the problem with the PM2 here is a scale swap I did. Maybe I didn't adjust it as well as I should have with the scale swap. Maybe there's a little bit too tight up there on the, uh, I don't know, what's that, what's that little... The little bar call that the it hits when it's open. I don't I don't know. I'm no I don't know knives. Now that said, an ideally good compression lock on a spider co with the spidey hole pops hard and is flicked back with ease. You can look like an alpha old guy who just wants to Hey bro, you mind if I snap it? But you know, in reality you're just an awkward idiot. Not like that guy. That guy's not an idiot. That guy totally has sex with things. These apparently are gonna need a little more fine tuning, which is fine because I I have lots of spare time. But at one time, the blurple here did have that perfect pop and drop. See, I saved this video in case I messed up something in the future. However, you know what? We can go to the Para 3 here. I forgot the Para 3 is pretty dialed in. And as a little bit of a backstory on adjusting and lubing, the tendency is if you're part of the Greasy Knife Cult or you subscribe to the KPL feed, the tendency is to overlube knives. And I had overlubed the Para 3 and it had built up under there. You know, it's like it's not popping. You're like, oh, let me just add a little more lube. The lube doesn't go anywhere. It's like locked in there. And I could tell because I could see the lube through the scale like an old fryer oil just like sitting there. So I stripped it, cleaned it, put it back together, kind of polished the bronze washers a little bit, and now it's pretty good. I need to do this with the pair two, and maybe I need to, you know, do it with the carabine. Maybe I need to just take it apart and take a look at those washers and make sure it's all, all the screws are properly tightened. But a good compression lock will make you forget about the ball bearing flippers if perfectly tuned in. 
Now, not all Spyderco compression locks are this good, but the Paramilitary 2, if you get the right one, the Para 3, if you get the right one, the Caribbean, if you get the right one, Yojimbo 2 was a pretty hard popper and it just fell back closed. That was a pretty nice one. If they're adjusted and broken in, they're great. Now let's do the axis lock. You can't forget about those when you're talking about fidget knives. I have several axis locks over the years. I have had several and not all are created equal. People love to hate Benchmade. They cut up guns, they're overpriced. The Omega Springs break on the inside of the axis lock. You're more of a moth guy. You saw a Benchmade rant that made a lot of sense once. Well, hey, do you know they had they made a knife called the Meat Crafter after all that, so it's pretty dope. It's got meat in the name, so you should totally check check them out again. But the Griptilian and the 941 here are about perfect to me. The Griptilian, maybe because I beat on it a little too much, but whatever I did, I did it right. It has a crisp pop, it flicks easy, pivots super easy. It's the best these locks can get. I have never had an Omega Spring break, and I've beat on them quite a bit. A one that I didn't love as much, the bug out, when I had that one, that wasn't as easy to flick as this. Or the 941 here. The 941 came perfect right out of the box with no adjustments. However, now that these are creeping up close to, or maybe they're at 300 now, I don't know. Maybe you should go with the standard 940 because that's a reasonable, probably $200 now. I remember when they used to be 140 now, I haven't bought a Benchmade in years, uh, but... You know, I like the ones I have. The FACT prototype they sent me years ago was pretty nice. So the FACT, the 941, and the Griptilian are my three favorite for popping. As always, QC and adjustment may vary from knife to knife. So I'm really sorry if you have these knives and they don't pop the same. And there's not really a real principled reason why I haven't bought a Benchmade in years. I just, they, they haven't done anything that looks good to me. Now the ultimate fidget knife, the OTF. You can go cheap, you can go expensive, you can go tiny. Out the front knives are going to be more prone to getting gunked up and need to be treated with care, but they're fun. It's like the cosplay is tactical, but they're kind of sensitive. They're real fun though. The Hawks are my absolute favorite with the deadlocks, the Model B and the Model C. I have covered this ground so much on the channel. They're just perfect. Now this little UTX-70, you ain't bad here, a little cute. And the Bounty Hunter needs its rem oil a few times a year or it misfires. Do you know the Bounty Hunters? I saw a post from PVK Vegas, the bounty hunters are like back in rotation again. So look for them right now, everyone. This is a this is a heads up. Like, Can I, how, how do I get a bounty hunter? Well, you have to follow social media. I'm really sorry. Even if the bounty hunter's temperamental, I love it. AKCs are about 50 or $60 and it has never let me down. Oh, okay, well, I had to re-glue the copper inlay when I dropped it and uh, while filming a video. And then another time it cut me real bad once while I was uh, filming a video. So there's a theme here, I'm thinking. So standard out the side autos aren't quite as fun. Uh, like this here, my example of the Protect Godfather, a really good example of a standard auto. But if it can be closed one-handed, if you need to do it for the feed, you know, show everybody that you know how to close. You know you can close those one-handed, right? Oh, God, I love that comment. It's a real nice knife. One day I'll get around to doing a video on it. Anyway, that about does it. These are the knives I like most as fidget toys. I'm sorry, they're tools, they're not toys. And there's some of my absolute favorite standard knives too. Thanks to Brian from the Winter Blade Co. for providing the factor for review, which now that I think about it, and I pulled the spider codes out and I was a little disappointed, it is probably the most fun out of all the non-autos here. Maybe the bench maids are a little bit, they're like right up there, they're like the same. But if you like this video, you need to say hi to the patrons who directly contribute to uh, my camera, video and editing gear, to keeping it updated. Everyone, everyone done thanking them now. Uh, so like, subscribe, comment, follow Winter Blade Co. Uh, look for the drops on May 31st. Hopefully I get this done before May 31st. Check the links in the description to find out more about Winter Blade Co. And uh, all the links to these other videos. Thanks for watching, everyone.